in this world as we're changing very much, I, I've worked in the film business for a long time, and not that long ago, international was kind of the backwater. You would sort of focus on the domestic releases, and the international was sort of gravy. Today, as you know, even with Avengers over the last weekend, international is what's driving a lot of growth for most companies, particularly with the burgeoning middle classes in China and in India. Um, so our next speaker is Robert Solomon, who oversees the executive MBA program here, and he's going to talk about managing risk and expansion in a global market. So uh, without further ado, Robert Solomon. Hey, everyone. For those of you who are guests, welcome. For those of you who are alumni, like myself, welcome home. So today, I'd like to talk a little bit about the work that I've been doing on globalization, and in particular, how companies interact in a global marketplace. And I'm glad that Paul teed me up so wonderfully with his setup about how companies are looking internationally for growth. Because the reality on globalization is, is that it's a lot harder than most people think. And companies struggle incredibly with their global expansions. Just some stylized facts really quickly. It takes foreign companies longer to start up their operations, and it costs them about 10 to 15% more than it would if a domestic company was setting up that same operation. Foreign companies run afoul of the law more in the countries in which they operate than similar domestic companies do. They're more likely to lose court cases than domestic companies do. They're more likely to get sanctioned, fined, and receive regulatory violations than domestic companies do. We also know that foreign companies have a higher rate or probability of failure than similar domestic companies do. Now, all is not lost. Right? There are fantastic global companies, large, successful, multinational companies. And the examples that I'm about to give you are of some of those successful multinational companies. But even for the successful ones, we know that on average, their operating margins tend to be lower in their foreign subsidiaries, in their foreign markets, than they are at home. And their profitability tends to be lower in their foreign markets than they are at home. Now, every single one of these companies I'm about to show you has experienced some kind of struggle. Walmart, China, Germany, Uber, China, Europe, Lincoln Electric, everywhere. Starbucks, Japan, China, Europe. Netflix, India, France. AES, and the thing, the kicker about AES, I don't know how many of you know this company, AES, they used to tag themselves, their tagline was, the power of being global. Right? That was their entire tagline. If you had bought into that thesis back when they started promoting it, you would have lost 85% of your equity capital. Over the time period from 2001 to 2019, they've gone down by about 85%. The market over that same time period has gone up nearly 100%. Oh, they've since changed their tagline. They're now, we are the power. And if you don't believe the stories that I'm telling you, look at the tail of the tape. This is from a study by Juan Alcacer at Harvard University, who found that on average, if you look at domestic companies versus foreign companies, on average, their rates of profitability are anywhere from 2 to 3% lower. And this is systematic over time. So the thing that I always find funny about this is exactly what Paul said. Is that for whatever reason, managers have bought into this thesis that we have to be global. And if we're not global, we won't survive. These data are from global corporate investment over the last 30 years or so. And what do we see? Global corporate investment has risen by more than 7% per annum on average. 7% per annum. That's more than two times the rate of global infl inflation, and more, or about two times the rate of global growth over that same time period. So ask yourself, if we know that globalization is incredibly difficult for companies, and that companies tend to struggle in global markets, why is it that managers seem to be investing at rates 
that are twice what the underlying demand might suggest. Now, one of the things my areas of expertise, what I study is, why is it that companies struggle in global markets? And the answer is because of institutional differences. Well, what do I mean by that? Differences in culture, differences in politics, and differences in economics across countries. You don't speak the language, you don't know the rules, you don't know the laws, you don't have a deep set of supplier connections, you don't have a customer Rolodex. In effect, you're a foreigner in a foreign land, much like if we dropped you off or many of you off tomorrow in Kazakhstan and said, figure it out. That same effect holds for companies as it does for individuals. And because of that, foreign companies are at a disadvantage in the local market. We refer to this disadvantage as a liability of foreignness. Just by virtue of the fact that you are not from there, you bear additional costs, and we refer to those additional costs as a liability of foreignness. All right, so if we as companies know ex ante that we're going to face this liability of foreignness, that is a result of these differences between countries and culture, politics, and economics, is there some way for us to quantify it? Is there some way for us to measure those cultural differences, to measure those economic differences, to measure those political differences? In essence, can we price the risk? Now, my colleague John Haight just came in here and talked to you about the perils of, or the potential perils of technology. But one of the benefits of living in a technological age is that every day we have more and more and more data at our disposal. And the data are becoming more robust and much, much more, uh, much better about culture, about politics, and about economics. There are actual measures of these things. And if I had the time, I would share all those measures with you. But the point is that if at the root of this liability of foreignness are these differences in culture, politics, and economics, if we can measure them, and every day we can more and more, then we can price them. And that's exactly what I've done. I've taken. Now it's an existing database of about 60 some odd countries. In a pairwise fashion, you can compare any two countries. And for those two sets of countries, a risk spread will spit out that tells you these are the risks in numerical equivalence of what it would mean to do business in this particular country based on where you're coming from. Now, I don't have much time left. And so from here, what I'll say is, if you're interested in learning more, and my publisher would be proud, you can find out in the book. Thanks so much for your time. I look forward to seeing you later.